Bonjour, bienvenue au French Tech Podcast. Welcome to the French Tech Podcast. Still recording here on the second day of the FinTech Festival. So happy to be welcomed here at the booth of the Armenia Ministry of High Tech Industry. Really a very great honor to be here. And it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Dimitrius from the Swinburne University of Technology. Hi, welcome, Dimitrius. Hey, hello. Nice to meet you. And thanks a lot for the invitation. This my is great to be here. My pleasure. We're going to be talking about education in mm -hmm. technology. Is that correct? Yep, perfect. Perfect. Favorite topic of mine. So what is it that you do in that field? So um, at Swinburne, I'm, I'm the director of the Master of Financial Technologies, which is mm -hmm. a brand new degree, uh, postgraduate qualification in Australia, the first one in Australia and one of the very few globally. And the main idea there is really to curate, upskill current and future talent of people active in financial technologies or wanting to be, to be part of the financial technologies landscape. So basically, we have so much workforce working in financial services right now, so there's a massive need to upskill them into the, not necessarily only the, the technologies, the technological skills, but the application of these technologies in financial services in terms of processes, innovation, products, customer, customer um, adoption and these things. And there's a need therefore really to understand what kind of business models emerge and how processes are changing, how business is changing completely. And of course, for future talent, people who come straight out of university, there is a fantastic pathway and we need really to, to capture that, that talent and really curate this innovation towards uh, product services and processes in, in financial services and also entrepreneurship. And this is fascinating. This is a fascinating field. And I think the vision of this degree and my role there is really to curate that knowledge and really to create this talent. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So you're talking about current <coughs> generations, future generations. I'd like to talk about those two separately. Yes. On the current generations, could you uh, talk about the impact that your kind mm. of program is having? The impact is, de is definitely for raising awareness that um, business as it happening as happens now in financial services is changing completely right. there is a fun, there's a tremendous shift due to technological developments and due to i wouldn't call it disruption i would call it more of evolutionary transformation because you know things tend to happen a bit slowly and also the fact we need to appreciate that technology is not the main thing we see a, a cohort of different impacts from regulation from policy making from education from um from from, from the actual business per se and Every single act that, that the technology has an impact for, it, it impacts everything else. So we yeah. need to see this in an ecosystem point of view, which is not, obvi it's not obvious at all. And believe me, there are so many employers working currently in financial institutions that they don't even have a clue about all these technologies. So it's not only about educating them on what is, a, what is blockchain, what is AI, but also trying them to understand primarily what does this actually do and how does it impact their life, in their work? Right. How does it make things different? If it does, and to most cases it does, so in a previous interview, uh, one of the speakers mentioned a study from McKinsey that got out recently not so very long yep. ago, where they mentioned how for some financial institutions back in Europe compared to Asia, where the, uh, where the ecosystem is much more competitive mm -hmm. and the adoption of digital technology and the awareness of the importance mm -hmm. of digital technologies has been more rapid, um, that for some of these Western traditional institutions, it's almost really too late like it's now or never from an uh, awareness raising educational point of view mm. is that something you would agree with uh, not necessarily because education is not static education happens all the time and upskilling happens all the time and you know at the end of the day the mission of all these degrees even if it is online if it is face to face is simply to, to it's for me it's called it's how I call it is an eye opener Right, basically, exactly. it's an eye opener yeah. to say, "Hey, this is the new world. This is already here. This is not what is coming, and this is where things are moving, and this is where the trends are." So, basically, it's an eye opener. is is an initiative, is an incentive to to look around and look beyond the business as usual and, and the box that we're all en 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 encapsulated in, and see, okay. And I've seen, for example, students of mine that come to my class with basically or no knowledge of blockchain. I'll give you an example, and then they go and do other courses on strategy, on on blockchain application, on coding, on, and they love it. But they didn't have a clue before, so it's all this eye-opener and seeing, looking, helping them to see what is out there. Which is, to me, this is what we, we are supposed to be doing. Because in any case, even if you do a 36 hours course, it doesn't, it doesn't mean you're an expert. Or it doesn't mean if yeah. you do an online course, you did a yeah. certificate, you're an expert. But you are just part of the, of the change. To me, this is where it is, and this is where universities or other providers are there for. Is to curate that knowledge. That's curate that knowledge yes. and, and help them transform and, their mindset. Exactly. And yeah. also be part of a bigger ecosystem because, you know, universities have a bigger ecosystem of innovation entrepreneurship they've got connections with a bigger network so it's also around allowing the students and the professionals to be part of that network and mm. use these capabilities and curate that talent for them but also for the other ecosystem I mean as, as it comes to our to our degree which is the only one in Australia we put it in the within the Australian fintech ecosystem that is part of this this is this is something that you need the skills the skills are there and you, you just have to 
develop them and everybody is able to be to be reskilled provided that they want to and um, i mean it's not about yeah. it's not all about wanting is that they have to if they want to stay yeah, in, it's all in, about in the game Defin definitely right future and, and we upskill ourselves all the time i mean <laughs> I, I i get upskilled with my knowledge with my with my and that's why i'm also the reason why i'm here is i want to see what's going on around the globe well yeah let's bring it back here to asia to singapore mm. so you're talking about the need for these kinds of skills and awareness in competitiveness getting out of your own ecosystem, mm. out of your box, right? And then figuring out what's going mm. on in the world. Could you share some of your impressions as you've been walking around here oh at the yeah, Festival in Singapore? Uh, first of all, it's my first time here and I really love it. And um, I found out about this through the MAS uh, post on LinkedIn that they were oh, inviting, right. ac inviting FinTech academics to attend, uh, free of charge to be honest, which was, am which was oh, amazing. Wow. So um, I didn't know what to expect because, I mean, I've been to Singapore many times, but and I know it's a fantastic FinTech hub here, but I didn't know what really to expect. And when I came here yesterday, I mean, it, I, I was blown away about the, with the number of people, the number yeah. of, of, of startups, the number of big companies and players that oh, the whole world is here basically, which yeah. is fantastic. To me, if I can take two or three key takeaways, the first one is we really, and based on my walking around and talking to people and going into different sessions, we really see convergence of technological application and financial services, and this is actually happening. So we see connectivity, we see interoperability. Uh, to me, the biggest um, and most promising one is artificial intelligence and machine mm -hmm. learning mm -hmm. together with um, business analytics and visualization. Data is everywhere and this and the power that data has and what, we, what, what I like to call it, this data potentiality is it's massive. The value, if you can try to extract the value of data with different ways and you, you create them accordingly, it's just fascinating. And we see so many different offerings, so many different products and services around there. And it's also part of how many different startups you see, yeah. which is fantastic. Absolutely. To what extent they all have a scalable business model, that's a different scenario. Right, of course. Yeah. But at least you see the, you see the drive, you see this, this innovation, leadership and, and entrepreneurial acumen, especially from young people, which to me is a dream. It's, it's fantastic. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. And well, the, so this drive is, is, is I think, it's, is, is something that we also as universities, I'm going back to that, we really need right. to capture and really support that. That's what I was going to ask your takeaways. Yeah. It's great to hear that. I think it does effectively give us a great sense of the competitiveness Absolutely. here in the Absolutely. region. The Absolutely. You know, just the sheer amount of startups. Absolutely. Uh, the dynamic mm. of market that's here, the mm. opportunities that are Absolutely. here. And if you also mentioned com competitiveness. I mean, yeah. you see also so many um, representatives from coming from other countries right. and from yeah. other hubs. Fintech is really an umbrella term, so you link it with different domains. I mean, I was it was amazing that the two key kickoff presentations yesterday were based on sustainability aspects. Right, and yeah. this, this is so you see the the power that Fintech creates into building data-driven experiential business models, which has also impact to other to other uh, in, uh, domains. And the fact that we've got uh, representatives from other countries, um, from Europe, from, from Asia, it shows that FinTech is really, is a real driver for economies, a real driver for competi competitiveness and innovation. I hope we can see more collaboration across the ecosystems and yes. across the hubs, which to me is fascinating. And we need to have this interoperability. It's, it's, diff it's not easy, it's very difficult, but at least when you bring people together, you see what how things happen and how also, you know, culture and civilization has has uh, has a flavor on fintech and you see how technology and finance services are being approached and adopted across the world which is to me fascinating well i, I think there's no better point to end this than on the importance of building bridges between the yes. west and the east it's definitely yes. one of the messages and takeaway messages absolutely, here at the fintech absolutely, festival absolutely well absolutely. thank you so much thank Dimitris, you so much for taking thank the time to talk you. to it's me really great, appreciate great it great pleasure to me thank you thank you, thank you.